So I saw the movie last night and I loved it. Cool. <laughs> uh, could you just tell us a little bit about where the story, the idea for the story was born? Okay, sure. Um, you know, I started writing in 2004 with John Cleese and John and I started working on this movie um, and at that time it was really a movie about a very inventive young man with a bright imagination and a Luddite caveman who did not like this guy. And it was really a battle of wills and also talking about, you know, uh, the fear of technology and the fear of change and, and keeping up in the world. And so that is one, that's the theme that stayed throughout the entire process of developing this. And when Chris and I started working on this, this was a fear we felt was universally relatable internationally but also across ages because as adults you can fear changing a new job or as kids you fear changing a new school there's always something we're fearing anything new is a is, <laughs> is a cause for fear in my sure. book so the thing was is that we try to imagine okay now what would be uh, the scariest thing for a caveman dad even if the world is changing literally under his feet is that of the change that goes on with his teenage daughter and possibly running off with a boy he uh, d does not identify with. So it's definitely it's definitely kind of modern, but at the same time, sticking with that aesthetic, that's cool. Yeah. I really like that. Um, so I also want to talk about the design of the film. It's probably the most visually beautiful animated film that I've seen. How do you conceive that whole atmosphere? That was a long process. Um, just the environments themselves, um, we would be treated to mega slideshows by our designers, uh, the production designer and the art director. Um, and they would really, they would scour books, the internet, their own slide uh, files um, for, for reference of strange environments from all over the planet. And it was surprising how many times they would show us something and we would actually challenge it as being something that was created in Photoshop. And they would say, no, no, that's a, that's a, that's a desert in Turkey or someplace like that. And um, so we found an abundance of really cool things that we could reference. And a little bit like we did with the animals in this world, we kind of created these combination animals to create our own you know, zoo. Yeah, it um, yeah it, was, it was a little bit the same way with the environments. We tended to reference things from the real world and put them together in new ways to create some of these amazing environments that the crews actually like, travel through. That's very cool. Um, also, as far as the characters are, are concerned, the actors that voice them seem almost tailor-made. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, how is that something that you think about when you're coming up with the story? Do you preconceive the actors that you want for those characters? Oh yeah, you know, we, you know. I'll start with just uh, Nicholas Cage's character of Grug. You know, when we started writing this, we knew we have a, a dad who we wanted. You know, his heart's in the right place for every frame of the film. He just wants his family to be safe. He wants to keep them, but his idea of doing it is keeping him trapped in a cave. And he has a lot of rules, you know, and he could come across as stern and possibly unlikable. And what when we started talking and thinking about it, we really were just always thinking of Nick because he has such a warmth in his voice and he has a world weariness and this beleaguered quality that you just feel that he loves these people, but he's just in over his head. Yeah, the anxiety. Is the anxiety, hilarious. exactly. That's probably the best part. I, I think. think <laughs> yes. um, and like you said before, the, the movie has... Uh, a lot of winks and nods to pretty much every age demographic. So when you when you were writing the script, did you kind of sense that? Was that something that you wanted to come through like so audiences would be able to relate to it a little bit easier? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that there's a couple different things going on. There's a universal thing going on just because it's a family. Um, it, it's, a, it's really a universal family. Mm -hmm. We've taken this film all over the world and everybody feels like it's a local, it's a local family. Right. So the things that are going on there are pretty, uh, they're pretty universal. Um, but uh, also, I think cavemen themselves, really, uh, that's something that kids and adults, I think everybody just they like cavemen. Yeah. There's a kind of a there's a kind of a, there's a primitive thing going on. There's kind of a castaway thing going on. Yeah. There's, there's no schools. There's no it's jobs. Life there's no without cars. filters. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's like, I you know, pretty much do everything. Everything. Yeah. yeah, life without filters. There's no society to shock. So yeah. if you're upset about something, you crying. can just be upset. Right. And I think that's one of the neat things about these cavemen that we realized as we were writing the script. There's no there's no ulterior motives going on. There's no guile. They're just they're just very honest with yeah. everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's almost like a. It's almost like a, an ancient road movie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, love that. I thought that was very cool. Um, another thing that I was wondering is at the end, there's still the possibility of a sequel. Is that something that you guys have already discussed maybe doing? 
Well, you know, I mean, that ending, it, it does up, seem yeah. like they're they're ready for it. But the part of that really thing from the storytelling when we were doing it is that we wanted to leave them in a place where they were still facing challenges. We didn't want it. This isn't about, you know, bank robbers who make it to Mexico. You hit the beach and you're like, whoo, we're done. In the movie, everything is going to fade off in the sunset. This sunset that they're riding into is still filled with challenges because that's the truth. No matter how mm -hmm. much you're going to get that enlightenment, the world and your family is going to keep on being confronted by change. Absolutely. Um, so, how was your working relationship? Is this this is the first time? It's the first time we met. Directed? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> first time. Um, what? How was that? How was that working together? You guys find it's an easy combination? Yeah, it's an easy combination. Um, we share the same sensibilities. We like the same movies, and I think we have the same kind of humor. So it made working on the film really, really pleasant and easy because everything we did would fit together very nicely. We would always outline the story together, but we would trade uh, the scenes, uh, the writing of the scenes, back and forth. I'd be working on one scene, and Kirk would be across the, uh, the the table working on an entirely different part of the movie. Then we'd trade those pages back and forth and, and work on each other's pages. But again, it always fit together because just sensibility-wise, we're we're much alike. And it beats drinking alone. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. All right. Thanks, well, oh, thank you. Thank you so much, hey, guys. I really appreciate it. All right, sure. Thanks, Thanks a lot. You.